Interesting question. What what about ketamine? Uh, what do I think about it? Well, different things. First of all, uh, you all know what ketamine is, or shall I briefly sketch it? Okay, this is a psychedelic drug that's recently come on the scene that uh, is what's called a disassociative anesthetic. It was used as a veterinary and children's anesthetic from the early 60s onward, and it was only slowly was it realized that uh, at low doses there were peculiar psychic phenomena. And uh, when done as an anesthetic, it's done 600 ml IV push. That means straight into the vein under pressure as fast as you can, 600 milliliters, which would be just like being hit by a truck. But when it's done uh, for its, I don't like to say recreationally, so when it's done for its uh, psychic effect, it's done like a hundred milliliters IM into the muscle and uh, it's a it's a troubling psychedelic because a lot of people I think are doing it who have never done any other and I think that would be very very misleading when I did it the first thing that my first reaction was complete amazement that here was a category of experience that I had no idea existed. In other words, it was a slot on the bookshelf that I didn't realize was there. It is not like mescaline, not like LSD, not like psilocybin, not like DMT, not like ayahuasca, not like any of these things. And yet, you cannot get away from the fact that it's a powerful psychedelic. So, it's it's useful for that alone to further expand the definition of what is a psychedelic drug. The problem that I have, I have two problems with it and both of them may be curmudgeonly on my part so you don't have to take it from me. The first one is that it's very easy. The first thing that happens after you've done ketamine is you cease to be concerned that you've done ketamine before there is any other effect that effect takes hold and uh, that's a funny thing I'm on on these tryptamine hallucinogens you are fully aware that you have taken a drug that you're walking on eggshells that you should keep yourself alert to what's going on and, and in other words it puts you on your toes you know you're in a dimension of risk and opportunity and you comport yourself that way on ketamine your definitions dissolve so completely that it's a major accomplishment to realize that you're a human being on a drug you keep discovering and losing that realization you keep saying oh yes that's what it is I'm somebody and I'm stoned somewhere and that's what this is now it's coming back to me which brings me to the second thing about ketamine which is puzzling and this is a problem with all psychedelic drugs Drugs, but but you have to sort of get a life strategy for dealing with it because it's important to overcome and that is it's very state bounded which is a term that the psychologist Roland Fisher coined which means you can't remember anything about it it's like an intense dream where you're intensely dreaming and the alarm goes off and as you stumble to the shower it's just and there is nothing there and ketamine is very much like this there's while you're on it there is a complete conviction that this is of staggering import to you and mankind <laughs> and then it is just totally mercurial and elusive and slips away now that in itself is obviously an interesting experience and uh, so ketamine seems to teach obliquely it teaches you that there are psychedelic states that you might not have called psychedelic. It teaches you that there are uh, wonderful insights that totally uh, 
elevate you that you can't remember 15 seconds later. Uh, so it sort of teaches you the richness of mind, but uh, by example rather than by the imparting of information that you can take away. And then whenever this question is asked, uh, unlike my acquaintance John Lilly, I always feel like I have to say to people, if you're going to take a new drug, you should go to the medical literature and read it. And I know there's this much in reprints on ketamine because I have it. And uh, what it will tell you is that um, there's a kindling effect which means each time you do it, it is easier the next time to get loaded. Uh, however, on the uh, neurophysiological level, or the level of uh, an electroencephalogram, this kindling effect is, can be, con I don't want to say it's dangerous, I just want to say it's a warning sign, because the same kind of kindling will uh, uh, proceed uh, a petite mal seizure and other forms of seizure. Let me say though on this matter of, of drugs and how you judge them, especially now since there are so many drugs in the MDA series making their way into society, MDA, MMDA, MDMA, MDM, MMDA2, a whole gamut of these and there will be more down through the years. I've always taken the position that uh, it was important that the psychedelic have a relationship to a plant. And uh, that's almost a perfect fit for me because I approve of psilocybin and it comes from a plant and masculine and it comes from a plant. And LSD is sort of problematic because the LSD 25 that is what most people are familiar with is not from a plant. That's a creature of pure of the laboratory. But uh, analogs active in the milligram range, diethyl uh, lysergic acid amide, uh, occur in morning glories of several species and in ergot uh, and in some cases non-toxically. So I as I live into the 80s, it's becoming harder and harder to maintain this thing about the importance of the plant because so many people don't can't imagine what you're talking about. They are totally devoted to one or another completely synthetic drug and are having revelations and uh, loving insights and all these things. And so I feel a little bit like a Puritan, but until I know more about it, for myself, that's sort of the categories I'll work with. Also, I'm the the plant drugs almost always have a shamanic tradition associated with them that's several thousand years old. So they're use tested in human societies, both for psychic effects and physiological effects. Uh, if a drug has been taken for ten thousand years, chances are it's fairly benign.